I feel like, I feel like I owe everybody an apology. For months, maybe even a full year, I've come out here and spoke as Roman Reigns and I said a lot of things, you know. I said that I'd be here every single week. I said I'd be a fighting champion. I said I was gonna be consistent and I said I was gonna be a workhorse, but that's all lies. It's a lie because the reality is my real name is Joe. And I've been living with leukemia for 11 years. And unfortunately, it's back. And because the leukemia is back, I cannot fulfill my role. I can't be that fighting champion. And I'm gonna have to relinquish the Universal Championship. And I'm not gonna lie, I'll take every prayer you can send my way, but I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm not looking for you to feel bad for me. Because I have faith. When I was 22 years old, I was diagnosed with this. And very quickly, I was able to put it in remission. But I'm not gonna lie, that was the hardest time of my life. I didn't have a job. I didn't have any money. I didn't have a home. And I had a baby on the way. And football was done with me. But you wanna know who gave me a chance? The team that gave me a chance was the WWE. And when I finally made it to the main roster and I was on the road, they put me in front of all of you, the WWE universe. And to be honest, y'all have made my dreams come true. And it didn't matter if you, you cheered me, it didn't matter if you booed me. You've always reacted to me, and that is the most important thing. And for that, I have to say thank you so much. But I want to make one thing clear. By no means is this a retirement speech. Because after I'm done whooping leukemia's ass once again, I'm coming back home. And when I do, it's not gonna just be about titles and being on top, no, it's about a purpose. I am coming back because I wanna show all of you, the whole world, I wanna show my family, my friends, my children, and my wife that when life throws a curveball at me, I am the type of man that will stand in that batter's box. I will crowd the plate, I will choke up, and I will swing for the fences every single time. Because I will beat this and I will be back, so you will see me very, very soon. Once again, thank you so much. God bless you, and I love you. Believe that. I didn't want to watch the end of that video because when I seen when I seen Seth Rollins tear up as they all stood together on stage, I actually started to tear up watching it at home. I I don't even I don't even know what to say, man. You know. You know what we what we do here on on a weekly basis is I strive to entertain and I, I strive to give you 
a view on WWE that a lot of people, not just me, agree with. WWE is not in a good place right now. We all know this. If you are denying that fact, you know, you're wrong. It's not in a good place right now. And, and we try to express that on a weekly basis. But when something like this arises, all of that shit just goes right out the window. It really does. I've been watching WWE ever since I was four years old. It's 32 years. I welcome these guys into my home every single week. Day in and day out. Pro wrestling has been a hobby of mine for the last 32 years. There was one instance in where I took a break. And that was during the Ruthless Aggression Era. I don't know why I did. Maybe I was burned out. Maybe I didn't really find an interest in it anymore. But for the last 32 years, I've welcomed... Every single pro wrestler that stepped foot on Monday Night Raw into my home. And I consider them a part of my family. You all know how I feel about Roman Reigns. The character Roman Reigns. I'm not talking about Joseph Anoa'i. I'm not talking about the real life man behind the character. I'm talking about Roman Reigns. You all know how I feel about the direction of the character. And you all know, the smart ones do. The idiots will be the ones to call me the hypocrite. Or JD's a hypocrite. The people who listen to me day in and day out, week after week, know that my frustration and your frustration, a lot of people's frustration, I'm not the only one, stems from WWE putting all their eggs in one basket. WWE has built Monday Night Raw and built the WWE around Roman Reigns. Instead of spreading the wealth across this roster to make the show legitimately the best show it could possibly be, they put all their eggs, all their storylines, all their efforts, all their resources, all their talent into building Roman Reigns and around Roman Reigns. It's not really a good business model if you look at it from an outsider's perspective. That is where my frustration came from. Never, never have I ever uttered, I dislike Joe and why. Never did I utter the words, I hate him, I dislike him, this, 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 that, 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 that. No. It was always about the Roman Reigns character and how he was portrayed, how he was miscast, how WWE pushed a certain initiative and agenda, which is all true, down everybody's throats to make you believe that the Roman Reigns character is something that he is not. Presenting the Roman Reigns character in a way that is not believable. Tonight, I put all that aside, and tonight, I am a fan of Joe Anawai. Roman Reigns relinquished the Universal Championship tonight because he's been battling leukemia for 11 years. And it's once again, unfortunately, come back and he can no longer compete right now at the level that he is used to competing at. And I want everybody to know that it was always about Roman Reigns. And it was always about how WWE portrayed him and how I just felt like WWE was doing themselves so much bad and building around one guy and neglecting everybody else. That's where my frustration came from. Never was it about the man himself. 
And if people want to come at me and call me a hypocrite and call me, you know, a fake, then I will deal with you appropriately. But other than that, I want you guys to know that I genuinely feel bad for whatever happened here. When Roman Reigns went up to the ramp and legitimately covered his eyes and started crying, and Dean Ambrose was holding back tears, you could see that Ambrose was holding back tears. And Rollins, as he looked dead into the camera, as they all met fists, right and clear camera shot, Rollins was just not afraid to let his emotions be be seen. At that point, I was I was starting to feel the tears roll down my face as well. You know, it's a real life situation and my view will stand. You know, I'm not going all soft on you, you know, but you know, it is a show. I I understand that. It's a show that's that's politically driven and there's a lot of internal politics that happens backstage in WWE. But I want to make it clear to everybody that We welcome these guys into our homes every single week. The risks that these guys take every single week, I understand that. And the pain behind, it could be anybody. You never know what someone is going through. You know, they may put on a smile and you may see them in this happy aura, this happy light, but you don't know the type of pain, the type of suffering the type of emotion that someone is going through, no matter how great their smile is or how great they are at just sweeping things under the rug. This was a situation that WWE, I'm sure, knew of. And I'm sure they knew of it last week when Braun Strowman, just out of nowhere, pretty much turned babyface by attacking Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. So you knew WWE was was going about switching their plans as of last week. That just became a little bit more clear tonight after Roman Reigns relinquished the Universal Championship. And throughout the day, I I was hearing different reports of, oh, Roman Reigns is injured. And Roman Reigns was off the house show circuit for the weekend, and he's got an undisclosed injury. But the people that I talk to on a weekly basis when Monday Night Raw hits at 8 p.m., you know, we all uttered the same the same sentiments. It's like Roman Reigns usually comes out ready to work. You know, even when Roman Reigns is not scheduled to wrestle, he's out in his ring gear. If you guys remember when Brock Lesnar handcuffed him and they put Roman Reigns on a stretcher and Brock Lesnar came out two, three different times to just beat up on Roman Reigns as he was strapped to a gurney and he had handcuffs and he had his hands tied behind his back. Roman Reigns... You know, we all joke that Reigns should have came out in in street clothes if he was suspended. Roman Reigns came out in his shield gear, ready to work. Roman Reigns has never been out there on Monday Night Raw without his work attire. So when Roman Reigns came out dressed in a black t-shirt, jeans, shoes, and his gold chain, he kind of knew something was fucked up. You just got this feeling of, "Uh uh-oh, what's going to happen? And I'm trying to look at this in the most positive light. I pray and I hope that Roman Reigns gets back on television and gets back to being 100% healthy and beats the fucking shit out of cancer because I fucking hate that word. I hate that word. I've dealt with cancer in my life one time when my grandmother had it. My, My dad's mom had it. She had pancreatic cancer, and she died of the young age of 52 years old. 52 years old. On February 3rd, and I was in 6th grade when it happened. I remember waking up that morning, and I know my parents left me and my brothers home because they went out and spent all night at the hospital while my grandmother was laid laid up or laying up in in the hospital, dying of pancreatic cancer. And my parents came back that next morning, got us ready for for school, 
And I repeatedly asked, what's happening with grandma? What's happening with grandma? And they didn't tell us. And my mom pulled me aside, being that I'm the older brother, because she didn't want to tell my, my, my brother Frank and, and my brother Mike what happened. She told me because I was the oldest, and I had to go to school that morning with the thought of my grandma not being around anymore. And I remember sitting in sixth grade in homeroom, and my teacher that morning, we usually said a prayer before, before school started. And I raised my hand and I and I'd said, I said, I want to pray for my grandmother who passed away from pancreatic cancer this morning. You know, and I know, I know you guys probably have relatives, friends, colleagues that probably have suffered through that same deal. You know, it, it's just a, sh- a shitty situation, man. It really is, and I and I don't wish that on anybody. And for the foreseeable future, until Roman Reigns gets back, I will not be talking about him in a negative light at all. I wish Joe Anoa'i the best, and I wish he beats the shit out of this bullshit leukemia, and I hope he gets back stronger than ever. Because no matter how we think of Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, being on Monday Night Raw, does make it an overall better show. And Monday Night Raw right now, if you look at the landscape of Monday Night Raw, Roman Reigns is out. Kevin Owens is out. Sami Zayn is out. Monday Night Raw right now is looking a little light. What does this mean for the foreseeable future on Monday Night Raw? I don't know. I really don't know. And I'm trying to look at the positives in all of this. And we will talk about all those positives in just a little bit. Side note. I understand that what I do here is for entertainment. I do sit here and I do express my views on WWE. And I do have merchandise of Roman Reigns. And of Roman Reigns... Inspiration on Barbershop Window. I have the And His Empire Is Still Not Over t-shirt. I have the And They Do It For Roman t-shirt with the (laughs) the beaver. You guys know that. And I have the Get Off My TV design. One of the few Get Off My TV designs with Roman's image on it. Or a silhouette of Roman's image on it doing the Superman punch. With those three t-shirts, I'm letting you guys know right now because so, th- those are some of my biggest sellers. I'm letting you guys know right now that every sale from those t-shirts, this point on, I will be donating to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So I just want to make sure you guys are aware of that as well. Because I take my love and my passion for pro wrestling very seriously. And like I said, no matter who it is, in this instance, unfortunately, it's, it's Roman Reigns. I welcome these guys into my home every single week, no matter the view I have on the show week in and week out. I welcome them into uh, into my home. You guys welcome them into your homes every single week. And this is real life. And I just pray that everything turns out to be 100% when it comes to his health. So that's all I'm going to mention about the Roman Reigns relinquishing the Universal Championship on Monday Night Raw tonight. Let's talk about the positives that could possibly come out of this. What could come out of this on Monday Night Raw? My feelings on Crown Jewel. I don't feel any excitement surrounding Crown Jewel. I didn't feel excitement before the Roman Reigns announcement, and I don't feel excitement being that we are literally a week and a half Two weeks out of Crown Jewel. I don't feel any excitement. I feel like Crown Jewel right now, even more so with this announcement, is a hindrance on WWE television. My thoughts when Roman Reigns relinquished the Universal Championship are, I wonder what WWE is going to do with the Universal Championship now. Now, my first thought was, 
They'll probably take the easy way out. They'll probably do Braun Strowman versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship at Crown Jewel. Two things immediately pop into my head when we talk about that new match, which was a triple threat match, now a one-on-one match between Strowman and Lesnar at Crown Jewel. Two things pop into my head about this. One, Braun Strowman was an organic babyface, a genuine babyface on Monday Night Raw who could have been given and should have been given the Universal Championship due to the fact that he was one of the most over guys in the entire company and in the most natural way possible. They should have given him the Universal Championship. But what WWE opted to do, and this is why I am frustrated with WWE when it comes to a guy like Roman Reigns, the character. They put all their eggs in one basket and they built the show around Roman Reigns with no thought about what they are doing moving forward. They just go with the flow. There's no thought behind anything. Their first thought was, okay, well, Roman Reigns is the Universal Champion. We need a good heel to battle Roman Reigns for the rest of the year. So they opted, instead of going with somebody else, they opted to take the guy who is the most over guy in the company outside of a Seth Rollins or an AJ Styles or a Daniel Bryan, Braun Strowman, who was naturally just a babyface and who people loved. They took him and they made him into a heel. They built the show around Roman Reigns, neglecting everything else that came before him. Changing things for him. Braun Strowman didn't win the Universal Championship as a babyface. Now that Roman Reigns has come out and relinquished the Universal Championship, now WWE is going back in reverse... And they're transforming Braun Strowman into a babyface once again. It's kind of shitty to think that Braun Strowman was used as part of the Roman push. And he wasn't really going to get anything out of it if the Crown Jewel triple threat match was still intact. How shitty would it be if Braun Strowman now, after all of this unfortunate circumstance, is crowned the Universal Champion... Because Roman Reigns isn't there. How does that look to you? Does that look like someone who the WWE trusts? Does that look like someone that the WWE wants to bestow the throne to? I don't think so. That's why I get frustrated. Braun Strowman should have been Universal Champion. Braun Strowman should have been the babyface and Roman the heel. Going into... Crown Jewel, or going into the remainder of 2018. And now Vince McMahon finally got what he wanted. By the grace of God himself, by the grace of our Lord, Roman Reigns is now, probably when he comes back, the most over baby face in the entire company. And I don't mean that in any negative way. I'm looking at it as if God knows Roman should have been a baby face. We've all been saying, heel, 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 because of the way Vince McMahon was operating. So God stepped in because Vince and his goons couldn't creatively write for Roman Reigns. He stepped in and he used his pen to forever script Roman Reigns from this point forward. Roman Reigns, now, by the grace of God, is over. And now WWE needs to go back and fix everything that they did because of Roman Reigns and their push for Roman Reigns. It's funny how things work out. It's like God knew Roman Reigns needed to be a babyface and was a babyface through and through. The way Vince McMahon portrayed him, we didn't know what the fuck he was. And because he actually let his shield down and we got a glimpse into who he is as a human being, there's no way that anybody from this point forward is going to boo Roman Reigns knowing what he's going through now. But WWE, no matter how great Roman Reigns is going to be when he comes back, 
WWE has to go back and fix everything that they messed up for Roman Reigns before he was diagnosed with leukemia again. It's pretty shitty that Braun Strowman might win the Universal Championship now that Roman is not there. And because of this unfortunate circumstance. That's my first gripe. My second gripe here, number two. WWE. Would it be out of the realm of possibility for WWE to give Brock Lesnar the Universal Championship again? You know, they are paying him all this money. WWE could say, you know what? We don't really trust Braun Strowman. We don't trust Braun Strowman to do the job that Roman had laid out. So we're just going to give the title to somebody that we know, somebody that we can trust in Brock Lesnar. Do you think that WWE would be stupid enough to give the Universal Championship to Brock Lesnar at Crown Jewel after the disaster of a title reign that he had when he dropped it to Roman Reigns? I hope not. I certainly hope not. Or WWE could go with the third option. We don't get any champion crowned at Crown Jewel because the event is a fucking complete piece of shit and it's a complete waste. I would rather something like that be done in the States. Yeah, you do have something called the Survivor Series coming up. And this is why I think Crown Jewel... Uh, is a hindrance. This is why I said it's a hindrance. They got this fucking World Cup tournament going on. Instead of doing this fucking bullshit that means nothing at the end of the day, WWE should be assembling a fucking tournament to crown a new Universal Champion with the entire tournament taking place at the Survivor Series. Seriously. Or you could go back and do an Elimination Chamber match at the Survivor Series and kind of pay homage to when the Elimination Chamber was first brought into the WWE by having it in 2018 contested for the vacant Universal Championship. That's the other thing I was thinking. Now, I love tournaments. I, I, w- I think a tournament would be the perfect example of Survivor Series. And you take eight of the top guys on Raw. If there is eight guys, I don't even know if there's eight guys to make a legitimate, compelling tournament at this point. The entire roster is decimated with injuries. There's nobody that I'm investing my time in here to be believable. WWE could certainly do that. This is why I think Crown Jewel right now is a complete waste of time. They could go into Crown Jewel and not not crown a, a Universal Champion, and they could save the entire thing for the Survivor Series, which I think would be a much better way to go about things. It does present an unpredictable situation, though. And I don't want to make light of anything that happened with Roman Reigns, but sometimes, you know, when a top guy is out for whatever reason, and I hope to God that he gets 100% better, but sometimes you got to look at the positives when something like this happens and a top guy is out. This means a couple of things. Number one, Monday, especially with what happened in the main event, which I'll talk about in a second, This makes Monday Night Raw that much more unpredictable. We have a universal championship that is vacant right now, and this means with Roman Reigns out as the top guy, do you know how many guys are going to be chomping at the bit, trying to prove themselves to Vince McMahon to step up and reclaim some glory on this show? Do you know what this means for a guy like Finn Balor or a guy like Elias? You know, guys like that. Drew McIntyre. Dean Ambrose. Seth Rollins now. Everybody is going to step up their game knowing that the top spot right now is vacant. That in itself is going to breed competition from within. When you breed competition from within when that top spot is vacant, that's a trickle-down effect. Everybody is going to feel it because now with Roman Reigns out, everybody's going to step up their game and prove themselves even more so because they want to look good in the eyes of Vince McMahon. That in itself is going to make better television, or at least somewhat on this show. So I love that. The fact that it's unpredictable, we got a vacant championship, we don't know what's going on, and WWE right now 
is going to have a lot of internal competition because everyone's going to be wanting to take that spot and move up the ranks with Roman not being there. I love it. I really, really think this is a a great time for Monday Night Raw. A time in which this show desperately, and I mean desperately, needed any type of momentum that it could possibly find. I love it. The other thing is Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. Now, I'm going to admit that I was wrong. I'm going to admit to you that I was wrong. For weeks, I said, WWE is foreshadowing Dean Ambrose here. WWE is foreshadowing Dean Ambrose heel turn. And when it does happen, or if it does happen, because we really didn't know what WWE was going to do. When or if it happened, it wouldn't be as exciting because WWE laid the groundwork pretty much as to why it should happen. And then when it does happen, it's not going to be that exciting or as exciting compared to if it was just completely out of nowhere. I was wrong. And I am not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. WWE actually did something that I did not expect them to do and they pulled it off brilliantly. And me using that terminology on this show or about this show is just bizarre in itself. You know, we're not watching Seinfeld. We're not we're not living in the Bizarro world with Bizarro Jerry and Bizarro Kramer and uh, Bizarro George. Okay, Th- this is this is the actual feeling that I had about this show. WWE did something brilliantly on Monday Night Raw. Do you know why they did this brilliantly? Do you know why I feel? This was a brilliant heel turn because WWE took Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins at the beginning of the show showing you real life emotion. At that point, WWE put it in your head that nothing bad is going to happen because these three men have traveled the road for six years together and have had the best moments of their lives together. There is nothing from this point on that would ever signal a heel turn for any one of these guys. They are now superheroes in the eyes of everybody. WWE laid that on your brain. And come the main event, I kind of knew what was going to happen. Braun Strowman earlier in the night came out and addressed Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman was there and he was exc- you know, he was explaining that Brock Lesnar was going to be the, the new Universal Champion. Braun Strowman comes out and he did his usual spiel that Brock Lesnar is going to get these hands and he's going to be the Universal Champion. He's going to bring the title back to Monday Night Raw. He's going to be on the show every Monday. And when he is the Universal Champion and when Roman Reigns gets healthy, Roman Reigns will be in line for a title shot first out of anybody. Braun Strowman, after his promo, was attacked in a beautiful manner by Drew McIntyre. The visual of Drew McIntyre running down the aisle, getting ready to deliver a Claymore kick was absolutely beautiful. A thing of beauty. Drew McIntyre delivered a Claymore kick. At that point, we already knew that the main event was going to be the tag team title match between The Shield and Ziggler McIntyre. At that point, I knew, with Braun Strowman being attacked, that Braun Strowman was probably going to play an integral part in the main event and do something to try and cost... McIntyre and Ziggler, the Raw Tag Team titles. I was right. And I'm sure you guys thought the same thing as well. Towards the end of the match, Braun Strowman comes down. Chaos. McIntyre and Strowman fight into the crowd. Ambrose and Rollins are left with Ziggler. Curb stomp. One, two, three. We have new Raw Tag Team champions. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. Celebrations happening. I had my head down. I'm like, okay, they won the Tag Team titles. It's pretty good. I'm on Twitter tweeting. And all of a sudden, I hear just chaos. I look up, and I look up at Dean Ambrose delivering a dirty deeds to Seth Rollins. At that point, my jaw was halfway to the floor. Not fully, but halfway. They got my attention. This was brilliant because, let's backtrack a little bit to the beginning of the show. WWE put it in your head that with real life emotion, there probably wouldn't be anything 
that happens at the end here. They're all brothers. It's a brotherhood. But WWE, in typical fashion, and like they say, the show must go on, Dean Ambrose turned heel in shocking fashion. Do you want to know why it was shocking? Because WWE, in any other fucking instance, they would have done in this instance, with Roman Reigns coming out relinquishing the title for his own personal reasons, WWE, in typical WWE fashion, would have swept this entire shit under the rug. Everything that you've seen with Dean Ambrose in bizarro WWE, they would have said, you know what? It never happened. It never happened. We're going to go on and we're, we're going to rewrite from here on out. Ambrose and Rollins have no issues. They're going to be the Raw Tag Team Champions. And they would have just said, fuck it. Forget everything that happened in the last couple of weeks with the foreshadowing of Dean Ambrose's heel turn. This was brilliant because WWE took real life, made you think that nothing was going to happen, and then turned around and did the complete opposite of what they usually do. They made it happen. This is why it was more shocking than anything else. And kudos to WWE and great job by whoever booked this shit because with Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins showing real life emotion in the beginning of the show and then Ambrose turning on Seth Rollins made it all that much more shocking. I absolutely fucking loved it. Loved it. This is the type of shit that we need to start seeing on Monday Night Raw. Shit that makes you say, oh shit. Shit that's going to get you to watch next week. They're going to get me to watch next week. They're going to get you to watch next week. No matter what the fucking World Series is. They're going to get you to watch next week. Dean Ambrose turned heel on Seth Rollins and pulled a Tommaso Ciampa on Johnny Gargano. That's what happened. He pulled the, the mat up. Dirty deeds on the concrete. Ambrose just mouthing off like a fucking lunatic. Took the tag team titles and threw them at Rollins, not giving a shit what happened. This was great shit. Absolutely brilliant stuff by WWE. I love the fact that they did something that I expected them to do and they didn't do it. And the thing that they did was it was still shocking. Because of the entire thing of Roman Reigns relinquishing the title and them showing real life emotion. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And remember when I said it's unpredictable? We don't have a universal champion. And by all means, after tonight, we don't have tag team champions. What does that mean? We could be in for a nice little streak of good Monday Night Raws. Believe it or not. What are they going to do with the tag team titles? Now, on one hand, there is no tag teams. There is no legitimate excitement in the tag team division. But we don't have tag team champions or a universal champion on Monday Night Raw. That in itself lends to being unpredictable and Monday Night Raw certainly needs anything that it could get right now to create intriguing television. I thought this was awesome. I really thought this was well done. I don't know what else to say regarding the top two, the, 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 you know, the top two storylines. I, I was wrong on Dean Ambrose's account. I was I was expecting it to be, oh, well, Ambrose turned heel, there you go. But they gave them the tag team championships, and he turned. Like, Ambrose, honestly, just by that aspect alone, is a fucking lunatic. You won the tag team titles, and you turned on him anyway. Just to prove a fucking point. Whatever that point is, I'm sure we will know of it next week on Monday Night Raw. I loved it. I thought it was great. So, Monday Night Raw could certainly be in for a very interesting next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm just looking forward to getting Crown Jewel over with. I don't know where WWE goes from here as far as the top storylines, man. Remember that tournament that I talked about? WWE could go about it in a couple of ways. Strowman and Lesnar could end in a no contest. We could get a, a, a decision where there's no champion crown, and they could really have a tournament. They could really have a tournament for the Universal Championship, which I think would fit into the realm of Survivor Series. 
Okay, this is what I don't think WWE is going to go about a tournament because they're having a fucking World Cup tournament at Crown Jewel. But this is why I said it's a hindrance. I wish WWE would focus more on Survivor Series and less on Crown Jewel because it's a fucking piece of shit show, you know. But imagine if WWE built a tournament around Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre getting into the finals, or maybe a tournament with Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins getting into the finals, and that being the match to crown a new Universal Champion. And then Roman Reigns comes back and is the law and gets back into the mix, and and we do lead to a Shield triple threat match at WrestleMania. It's it's certainly going to be unpredictable. WWE has a few different ways to go about it. And Survivor Series, by default, with this Roman Reigns unfortunate news, I honestly think Survivor Series is going to benefit from this, because before Roman Reigns relinquished the title, Survivor Series was just looking like a throwaway show. And now with the Universal Championship being relinquished, Survivor Series kind of looks better in a new light. It, it, it kind of took on a new life of its own. And I hope WWE puts a lot of resources into Survivor Series and making it special. Because right now, with all the unpredictability that we got going on with Monday Night Raw, it certainly could be one of the better shows of the year for WWE. So I hope I hope we get some sort of, you know intrigue and excitement leading into the month of November. I really do. But I loved everything with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. I thought it was a great, brilliant, masterful heel turn. And with Roman Reigns, you know, I pray 100% that he gets better and 100% healthy, but this is not an excuse for me to not talk about the possibilities of when he comes back. You know, when WWE has Roman Reigns back on television, that doesn't mean they need to push him to the fucking moon again. That doesn't mean they need to give him the keys to the kingdom again. That doesn't mean they have to put him in the Royal Rumble at number 30 and have him win the whole fucking thing. That doesn't mean he's got a main event WrestleMania again. You know, that is just going to frustrate me even more. Because this show has so much fucking... Never mind this show. The WWE has so much potential untapped potential that they refuse to push. They have so much untapped potential that they neglect every single week for the sake of one man and one idea and one agenda and one initiative. I don't like that. They have to just look at the entire picture and start pushing guys who are not prone to being pushed when shit like this happens you know, you'll you'll be better off for it in the end and you'll have a nice cushion underneath yourself. Realistically, with Roman Reigns being away for an extended period of time now, who do they have on that show besides Seth Rollins that is a legitimate fucking guy? Yeah, Drew McIntyre looks great. Looks like a, a monster. Fantastic. Great. Braun Strowman, he's taking a hit. He doesn't look the same in my eyes as he was a year ago. Dean Ambrose, we'll see how this heel turn is. Is it going to be a cheesy heel, or is it going to be a real lunatic fringe? Is he going to fly off the fucking handle? I don't expect him to be a Brian Pillman-like heel, but I want him to be a fucking heel, and a lunatic at that. Outside of that, who else on this show is positioned as a top guy? Nobody. Nobody. And this is what frustrates me. You put all your eggs in one basket, and then when shit like this happens, you have no fucking support underneath that top guy. When that top guy is out, you have nothing. The pillars come crumbling down. Now, if they had three, four, five different guys at the same fucking level, that's a different story, but they don't. Outside of Strowman, Rollins, Ambrose, McIntyre. You could probably put Ziggler in that, in that category. You know, Ziggler's had some sort of a resurgence over the last year. Who on this show, for a three-hour show, who on this show, outside those five guys, is worthy of moving up the ladder? Who on that show do you legitimately care about? Nobody. Nobody. You know, I made mention, I made mention to a few people that I talked to today. I did an off the script today in which I talked about two things. Talked about one, Charlotte and Becky Lynch. Supposedly the Survivor Series match card, or some of the matches, were leaked in an online survey that WWE is yet to publish yet. Somehow, some people in the community 
got a hold of this survey, and it was reported as news. One of the matches was Charlotte versus Asuka at Survivor Series. Now, why would this match happen? Why would this match happen at Survivor Series? Does that mean that Charlotte beats Becky? Does Charlotte beat Becky for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship? Is she the SmackDown Women's Champion going into Survivor Series? I think that's a mistake. Because if Becky loses the championship, then everything you've done with Becky is a complete waste of fucking time. Becky cannot lose the fucking title. Charlotte, by all accounts, with this with this leak or report, rumor, whatever you want to go about, might walk into Survivor Series as the SmackDown Live Women's Champion. Asuka, she's in the Battle Royal at Evolution, which in itself is a fucking crime. Asuka is in a Battle Royal with Alicia Fox and Dana fucking Brooke. You know? Come on. The Battle Royal is for a shot at a championship opportunity, depending on who wins it and what brand they're on. So does Asuka win that Battle Royal and challenge Charlotte in a rematch from WrestleMania for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship? Now, I made a statement to a few people that I talked to today. And mix that with the fact that WWE is going to Fox in October of 2019 with SmackDown Live. You know for a fact they are going to load the show from here on out moving forward. Theoretically, SmackDown Live is going to be the A show, being that it's going to be on Fox 5, and Fox is paying $2 billion for that program. Does WWE end the brand split? This is a legitimate fucking question. Does WWE end the brand split, and we get rid of all this shit, and have Raw and SmackDown join join as one again? With SmackDown being on Friday nights on Fox, you know they're going to need guys and star power to load that show. You're not going to put on the current SmackDown Live that you see now on Fox 5 in October 2019. It's not going to have the legs to stand on. I don't think anyone's going to go out and watch, and I love them to death. I don't think anyone's going to go out and watch Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles and the Usos and Andrade Cien Almas. They may give you a great fucking match, but people are going to want to tune into that show to see a Roman Reigns and a Seth Rollins and a Dean Ambrose and everything else and whoever else is called up from NXT at that point. On one roster. I honestly think right now, the more we think about it, the brand split could be coming to an end. And if this show is any indication, this is exactly what I was thinking about tonight. If this is any indication of what Monday Night Raw is going to look like going on into 2019, something needs to be done. They have no tag teams. They have no women's division. They have no top of the card outside of the same five guys that we see every single week. And they refuse to push talent. Maybe the brand split coming to an end might benefit Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live and the WWE as a whole. I made a prediction to those people that I talked to today. I said Charlotte going into WrestleMania as the SmackDown Live Women's Champion and Ronda Rousey going into WrestleMania as the Raw Women's Champion. That's your unification title match right there. Merge the women's divisions. Get it over with. Same thing with the tag team championships. Get it over with. I don't know how you can exist on this show with the tag teams that you have right now on the roster. I don't. Same thing on SmackDown Live. It's the same three fucking teams every week. Usos and New Day and The Bar. Outside that, they have nobody and refuse to push anybody. On Monday Night Raw, look at the top of the card. It's the same shit every single time. And now that Roman Reigns is not there, it's even worse. It's even worse and it looks weaker. Does WWE end the brand split? I honestly think, and I love, listen, WWE had all the potential in the world to make this brand split special, but they abandoned that months ago. Months ago. I honestly think it's about time we end the brand split. We get back. You could still have the Universal title. You could still have the WWE Championship. You could still have your Intercontinental US, but as far as the tag teams, one set of titles, and the women's, one set of titles. That is it. That is it. I think it's about time we start talking about ending the brand split. Because this show is a shell of its former self. This show is not, is not at the point where it needs to be. At all. Nowhere close. They need star power. They need momentum. They need stars. They need a main event. They need top guys. They don't have top guys right now. They don't. 
And I honestly think that the brand split would do wonders right now if it came to an end. That's just my feeling on all that. This is the shit I've been thinking about all night. Because this show did not feel like a show after the announcement that Roman Reigns made. I had no interest in anything else that happened on the show because I was just so blown away. I was honestly shocked. Shocked. It hit me like a ton of bricks knowing what he said tonight, you know, and feeling the way I did tonight. Completely unexpected. Unexpected. And an announcement like that, a real-life situation like that, made everything else on this show completely worthless to me. And there's really nothing else to talk about. There's nothing else of importance on this show outside of what happened at the beginning and what happened at the end. Everything else in between was Crown Jewel. Little Crown Jewel plug here. Little Crown Jewel plug there with DX and Kurt Angle. Then a Women's Evolution pay-per-view plug with Trish Stratus and Lita. And a Fatal 4-Way that meant nothing with the women on the roster. And Sasha Banks returning to fight Ruby Riot. Nothing. Let me know what you guys think about all that, man. It's really up for a topic of discussion right now. It really is. And that's the way I feel on that. Finn Balor versus Bobby Lashley. They went about this match, I guess. I mean, Finn Balor was interrupted by Bobby Lashley last week. Or Leo Rush, I have to say, and Bobby Lashley. And Finn Balor wins. Finn Balor wins with a roll-up out of nowhere. So Bobby Lashley looks like money and he smells like money, but at the end of the night, he became bankrupt because Balor beat him. So how good does Bobby Lashley look in the end here? And this is what I'm talking about. WWE, they don't know how to push or book anyone outside of who they want. Bobby Lashley should have been an unadulterated fucking killing machine on this show. And the fact that I come on here weekly and state that he's Bobby Trashley, and you could put a fucking trash can that you could find underneath the WWE ring, in the middle of the ring, put a fucking black headband around it, and it would have more charisma than Bobby Lashley. That's the way, that's the state right now of Bobby Lashley. Trash. Trash. So, in his first night out, clean, he's losing to Finn Balor. How can anyone take him seriously? And I'm not taking anything away from Finn Balor. Finn Balor should be positioned as a top guy on this show. Outside of his fucking smiling and his Colgate advertising. He needs to be pushed as a top guy. He's been suppressed for too long to a point where no one cares. No one's going to take him seriously. Same thing with Bobby Lashley. No one's going to take him seriously. Not with shit like this. Finn Balor wins. Roll up out of nowhere. Sasha Banks and Ruby Riot. Sasha Banks is back. Battling Ruby Riot. This is the type of women's action that we need to see on a weekly basis. I would like to see this more and more on a weekly basis. And the brand split ending would definitely benefit the women's divisions. Absolutely. You cannot convince me otherwise that it would not. WWE announced today that Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Natalia will be going into Evolution to battle the Riot Squad. Again, Liv Morgan, Ruby Riot, and uh, apparently the Viking Princess, Sarah Logan. Still waiting on the explanation as to why she's a Viking now and not a farmer. But if that's the best that you could come up with, and, and I'm sure we'll rant about this. We're going to go over the Evolution pay-per-view this weekend. We're going to do preview predictions. We'll, we'll, we'll rant on it. You know, th- this is a shame. It really is a shame that WWE put little to no thought Never mind little, no thought, zero thought into booking these women in a meaningful way. Seriously, what does this match mean to any of these six women? How does this match, you know, stack up on an evolution card that is being hyped as the first ever women's pay-per-view, but we're getting this and it's a match that we've seen literally every single week for the entire year on Monday Night Raw. So you're building evolution up as a big pay-per-view and you're giving me a match that isn't even Monday Night Raw worthy on the pay-per-view. Who would want to watch? Who would want to order? Who would want to buy a ticket to sit there when they could see this shit every week on Monday Night Raw? What does the match mean to you? What does this match mean to the women? And does it mean anything for the show? Nothing. It means absolutely nothing. And here's another one. 
These women are battling out in a six-woman tag over what? I don't know. Who's to say that they don't want to be in the Battle Royal to get an opportunity for a championship opportunity? Is this more important than that? Now, granted, you could look at it from either side. Do you want them in a fucking meaningless Battle Royal? But that meaningless Battle Royal comes with a championship opportunity at any title, depending on the show that they're on. Or you could be in a fucking six-woman tag that you've done night in and night out for the whole year with little to no meaning. It's ridiculous. It's a shame. On top of that, Sasha Banks and Bayley deserve a lot better. A lot better after being positioned as the, uh, I would say, the trailblazers to get this entire thing started. NXT started it, and this is what WWE is doing. NXT started the women's revolution in WWE, and this is how they pay it forward to Sasha Banks and Bayley. By putting them in a match that means absolutely nothing. Nothing for everybody involved. I don't understand. And WWE, you know, they'll spin it the right way. They'll spin it in their own way. Well, the Riot Squad, they want to take out the Trailblazers uh, in Sasha Banks and Bayley and stake claim for their spot in the evolution. Give me a fucking break. They haven't stake claim the entire fucking year? What's the difference between evolution and now? On a random episode of Monday Night Raw. Nothing. As far as I'm concerned, we're getting a five-hour Monday Night Raw on Sunday night. Ruby Riot wins. Riot kick for the pin. Natalia gets involved. The entire Riot squad get involved. You got, uh, who was in the ring? Uh, Liv Morgan was in the ring and Bailey takes her out. Right, they roll to the outside. Sarah Logan gets involved. Natalia gets involved. Sasha Banks like a dummy. Booked to go out there and be like, hey guys, what's going on? What's the commotion out here? And then... After that, Banks comes out, starts swinging at Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. Banks goes back in, and Ruby Riot takes advantage of the stupid babyface syndrome suffered by Sasha Banks and connects with a Riot kick for the win. Trash. So stupid. Degeneration X. You know, man, I-, I can't get excited about Shawn Michaels coming out of retirement. I can't. I can't. I can't get excited because it should be happening here. It really should be happening here. I know, you know, I'm not even excited for the tag team match. I'm not. I'm not. Because I know for a fact that this tag team match with DX and the Brothers of Destruction is just a means to get us to what's next. And what's next is what I really want to see. One, because it's on American soil. Two, it'll be in front of people that actually fucking care about what's going on. And three... It's probably going to be Shawn Michaels versus the Undertaker and Survivor Series. But they talk about, you know, there's a lot of big words being thrown around a lot lately. Fear, you know. Undertaker says, you know, uh, Triple H is too busy being in a boardroom. That fear kept Shawn Michaels coming out of retirement. Triple H says it will take a lot more than fear to stop them. He mocks Kane for taking his lunch break from being mayor and recording a promo in the boiler room with a GoPro. Sean says neither of them are running for mayor. Sean goes on about nostalgia and says that really is just a polite way to say old. Triple H then comes in and says uh, something about recent happenings and says maybe old, just a polite way to say that we're better. Triple H then points to the X on Shawn Michaels' new Degeneration X t-shirt that you could buy on WWEshop.com. Triple H points to the X and says for many years it's meant that they were better than everyone else. He says maybe that X is in the past, but there's another X that's about the future. And Rhode Island started to chant NXT, which brought a smile to Triple H's face because that's his baby. Shawn says they're running that... Two, as fans start chanting NXT, you know, Sean's a part of NXT. He's, a, you know, he's Triple H's right-hand guy down at NXT. Triple H says that they're bringing DX to Crown Jewel and they're not coming to make Kane or Taker laugh or feel nostalgia. They're coming to kick their asses. So then obviously the Undertaker's lights uh, or the, the darkness comes up. Lights go out. Undertaker's bells hit as the lights go down and they are appearing in front of two tombstones. Two graves that appear to be empty. 
with the names of Shawn Michaels and Triple H and the year that they were born and the year that they will perish. And that is the, the, the year of 2018, November 2nd, at Crown Jewel. Rest in peace. They will put them down and they will own their blackened souls for all eternity. Pretty cool. Same old shit. It's the same old song and dance with these guys. I'm not excited about the match. I, I'm really not. I, I'll be excited when we get things back to American soil and we start building towards Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. Because I know this tag team match is going to be one of those things that gets Shawn Michaels' feet wet for the big match. This is a beginning or, or a means to what, whatever's coming next. That's all it is. So I'm not excited about it at all. Paul Heyman comes out and he goes on to talk about Roman Reigns. And I, alongside everybody else, really just stopped what we were doing. And, you know, kudos to Rhode Island. When, when Paul Heyman took the microphone and started to mention about Roman Reigns and, you know, offer his thoughts and prayers and, you know, him explaining that when he goes home to his kids at the end of the night and he has to explain what happened here tonight, Rhode Island was in dead silence. And Paul Heyman pretty much commanded your attention when he was talking about real life. And kudos to Rhode Island for showing Paul Heyman that respect and, and, and to showing Roman Reigns that respect as well. So pretty much Heyman says that, um, you know, Crown Jewel with Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman, uh, they are going to take the Universal Championship uh, Heyman says Braun can keep doing what he wants to build himself up as a monster because his client doesn't have to build himself up. He is a monster. Heyman says Braun isn't in Lesnar's league and can't compare the familiar yell that we all uh, once loved. I don't love it anymore. Uh, came on to the PA system. Strowman comes out. His music hits. Comes marching to the ring. And he says that he wants Heyman to tell Lesnar that he's going to beat Lesnar's ass all over Crown Jewel. He mentioned all over Crown Jewel. He didn't, he didn't mention nothing, and Monday Night Raw had mentioned nothing about Saudi Arabia, again. And then Braun, like I mentioned before, he says he will take the title back to Raw. He will be on the show every Monday. Braun says he has differences with Roman Reigns over the years, but when Reigns comes back and beats Leukemia's ass, he is going to offer Roman Reigns the first shot for the Universal Championship. And then at the end of the promo, Drew McIntyre comes flying out of nowhere, which looked beautiful. Hits Braun Strowman with a Claymore kick. Elias versus Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews, I thought, was getting pushed. Well, he is on TV, so thanks for coming, Apollo Crews. You had your 15 minutes of fame on Monday Night Raw, and he lost. Drift away by Elias for the win here. After the match, Elias uh, is still on stage with his guitar. They go to commercial, comes back from commercial. He's still on stage. And apparently, we got... Elias and Baron Corbin going back and forth for whatever reason. Now, Baron Corbin came out and said the show has to continue. Elias, you know, felt slighted that he was interrupted again. He wanted to play a song and said, fuck you, you know, Corbin, I don't give a shit what you say. I'm going to sit here, shut your mouth, silence your cell phone, and I'm going to play this song that I just came up with in the top of my head. So he's playing the song, he's playing the song. And Braun Strowman ushers him to the back. Elias walks away. Baron Corbin is, I guess, stating what's ever coming next on Monday Night Raw. Elias comes walking back out. Fans are going crazy. Nails Baron Corbin with a guitar to the back of the head. And that's that. Elias, all of a sudden, is now walking on the babyface side of the fence. So Roman Reigns being out is kind of transitioning and being felt all over the roster. Braun Strowman going back to being a babyface. Elias is now a babyface, from what I can tell, or at least what I think WWE is doing with Elias. So it's interesting that Elias and Braun Strowman now are being positioned as babyfaces on this show with Roman Reigns' unfortunate absence. Pretty interesting. Again, we'll see what happens. Ronda Rousey and Nikki Bella had a contract signing. This was pretty boring. This was pretty boring, man. You know, if they really wanted to sell me on the match, then there should have been some real, real, you know, big brawl here. But all WWE did was keep it very cordial. 
You know, there was you know a couple a couple of shots thrown back and forth. You know, Bellas didn't want to get into the ring, and Ronda Rousey was trying to tempt them into the ring. Listen, you have my word; I won't attack you. So Nikki Bella, you know, enters the ring because she is taking a chance on Ronda, conducting herself in a professional manner. Nikki brings up how Ronda promised her mother she would win the Olympics and how she would win the world championships like she like she did, and and how she would not get hurt in the octagon before retiring undefeated. Nikki says Rousey gave her mother her word on those promises, and her mother is already ashamed of her. She tells Rousey to imagine what her mother is going to think when a diva beats her for the Raw Women's title on Sunday. Rousey signs the contract. Nikki signs the contract. And then Nikki slaps Ronda right in the face as she signs the contract. Nikki taunts Ronda. Ronda gets angry. She doesn't throw a punch. She doesn't throw a slap. She doesn't throw the table on the Bella Twins, which I expected because you know these WWE contract signings, they always end up with a table being flipped or someone going through the table or a big brawl. No one even moderated this thing. Michael Cole was there. He made the introductions and then he left. You know, I, I don't know. I don't understand what happened here. So Rousey said that she will end Nikki Bella on Sunday. And by that alone, you have my word. And she smiled while doing it. I enjoyed Ronda's facial expressions at the end of this thing, but it was ultimately a boring contract signing and a contract signing that did not get me excited at all about their women's championship match on Sunday night. It needs to last less than five minutes. Probably less than that. So we'll see what happens. Main event that I am not excited about at all. I'm pretty sure you guys feel the same way. Nia Jax, Dana Brooke, Tamina Snuka, and Amber Moon... A complete waste of everybody's fucking time. Ember Moon should not be in a battle royal on Evolution. Ember Moon wins, covers Tamina for the for the pin, hits the eclipse. So Tamina comes back and is immediately pinned by Ember Moon. Good job. Yet you wanted me to believe in Tamina Snooker being a monster in the division. Sure. So if Ember Moon is beating Tamina with the eclipse, which is great. I love it. How am I supposed to believe in Tamina beating Nia Jax? Little things that matter, WWE. The little things that matter. Tag team titles. We already went over this, man. Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose versus Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. The Shield win the tag team titles after the match. Rollins takes both of his titles. As Ambrose grabs his, they hug, celebrate. Ambrose turns out of nowhere and drops Rollins with a dirty deeds. I told you how I felt about all of this already in the beginning of the show. And it's definitely got my interest going into next week on Monday Night Raw. Thank you guys so very much. I'm getting out of here, man. That is your review. If you enjoyed the review and my thoughts on the show, leave me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. If you missed Off the Script this afternoon, man, I uploaded part three of Off the Script where I talk about the leaked Survivor Series match card. We go over that. Plus, the WWE Network is changing. What new changes are coming to the network, and are you going to pay a lot more for the WWE Network, and is it worth your money? We go over all that as well. Thank you guys so very much. Follow me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on that bell for all notifications. We are less than 900 away, less than 900 subscribers away from 100,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Tomorrow, I got a special con- uh, I got a special video coming, man. Tomorrow, YouTube granted me access to YouTube premieres. So we are going to premiere episode 7 of WWE 2K19, My Career. And we will be doing that tomorrow at 3 p.m., man. So make sure you guys tune in to that. Should be fun. It's a great episode. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope to see you guys tomorrow for the premiere of part 7 of WWE, My Career. So thank you guys so much. I will see you tomorrow for the premiere and then for SmackDown Live. Hope you guys are well, man. Get get well, Roman Reigns. You know, we, we talk a lot of truth on this show. I'm very proud of what I built here, but I never want to see anyone legitimately out for this type of reason, man. Really, my thoughts and prayers are with Roman. My thoughts and prayers, more importantly, are with Joe and Hawaii. And I hope Roman Reigns gets back to Monday Night Raw 100% healthy as he kicks cancer's ass, man. Thank you guys so very much, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the premiere, and then tomorrow night for SmackDown Live. I'll talk to you later.